Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shochin Anandotto and in today's lecture I'll talk about uh, the introduction to ICJDM. This is the part 1 video, there will be part 1, part 2 and part 3. So 3 lectures uh, that will uh, deal with the introduction uh, to ICJDM. So one by one we'll see the concept of ICJDM. First we'll see the what is the coastal zone, then we'll see what is the coastal zone management, then we'll see what is ICJDM, the integration, different process of integration, then we'll see the sustainability. So in uh, 3 lectures we'll uh, will complete uh, the introduction uh, to SHJM system. So in the first lecture, we'll talk about uh, the basically uh, the coastal zone. So coastal zone, uh, so coastal zone is the interaction between the land and sea. So here uh, is your uh, land side and here is the your seaside so this is the coastal zone so from the land side or seaside uh, of the when uh, this both are uh, the processes where uh, the both the oceanic and the land process are work here so from the land processes like the from the landward side rivers are coming and it's really bringing lots of the sediment to the ocean it's bringing lots of the nutrient and the also domestic industrial uh, pollution is also bringing to the from the land side to the seaside so different land process processes like uh, uh, the coastal erosion also so different land processes and different sea processes like the tides are coming the waves are coming the then the then the waves are winds are coming so and uh, different other uh, also processes that will happening in the coastal zone where the land and sea are interacting or meet so that is uh, the coastal zone and uh, the coastal zone is most uh, dynamic system why dynamic so here the always the time to time different processes will be happen so like the tides so high tide low tides in a day uh, twice or uh, once uh, tides will be there then the waves are always coming high waves it's uh, approaching to the coast and break in the breaker zone it's break so it's always dynamic system and the different other processes is also coming and meet uh, the coastal zone so that's why it's a most uh, dynamic system time to time it's changing and it's a uh, very resourceful so the different nutrients are coming from the sea to from the land to sea so that's making uh, this uh, zone is much more productive ecosystem and uh, it's also due to the increase in the nutrient and the productivity of this coastal zone is increased so nutrient increase that increase the productivity so due to increase productivity it increase the biological diversity of this coastal zone and not only the biological diversity other natural resources is also very high in the coastal zone but it is also much more disaster prone zone why because in this coastal zone all the natural calamities are the heat first in the land means in the land that is the coastal zone because any kind of storm surges when it's coming it's hit in, in coastal zone then the cyclone then the typhoon then the any type of the tsunamis and uh, storm surges so everything natural calamities and high wind everything is coming and hit the coastal zone so that's why it is much more uh, disaster prone zone of any country and it also includes different types of habitats like the mangroves, then the marshes, then the wetland, then the flood plant, the coral reef, sandy resort, then the rocky shore. I have talked about few ecosystems like the coral reef a little bit and the mangroves and wetland in my previous lecture. So it also includes uh, different types of uh, ecosystem with uh, lots of biological diversity, most dynamical system and also much more disaster prone zone. So that is uh, all about the coastal zone. And so it is a diverse coastal zone. It's productive. Just uh, I have talked about the productivity. It's diverse and productive which have been great import and historically from from the very if you go to the history of uh, human population like the first uh, you can source of the economy or the transportation is the first uh, uh, marine transportation the sea transportation or it's basically historical it's a uh, ocean zone or coastal zone is uh, much more important to the human and we can see that uh, the oh, almost 70 percent of the world population 70 percent of the world population lies within the 
day walk from the coast means 100 km of the coastline you can find the 70 percent of the world population but uh, you can if you if you see the coastal zone it's only eight percent of the world land okay so only the world uh, surface area it's cover only eight percent but it's provide 25 percent of the global productivity so you can imagine the importance of the coastal zone okay so it has very less uh, means area but it has a huge uh, productivity and uh, two third of the world uh, cities uh, we will see in the next slide uh, the big big cities any big cities that are lies within the coastline so uh, two third of the world uh, cities occur in the coast and human activities and, uh, on the coastal zone basically uh, degraded the system so lots of anthropogenic activities um, that is also called human activities like the pollution like the domestic industrial um, effluent to different the over exploitation then different anthropogenic threats that are basically degrading the coastal zone and that makes the unsustainable uh, resource management and also making the resource that are happening in the coastal zone it's make the unsustainable like the over exploitation is the biggest one of the uh, main uh, source of uh, main reason for the unsustainability and uh, it is also but uh, environment uh, should be considered in uh, the coastal zone should be because we are making lots of the construction lots of the thing in the uh, coastal zone but we are not bothered about the environment we have to think about the uh, in a proper way in sustainable way uh, to manage the coastal zone so we uh, and the, this is also hazardous zone uh, we have uh, previous uh, slide we have talked about the coastal hazards so that's why the need of uh, the hour is uh, the coastal zone management so that's why the ICGM is very important nowadays uh, to manage it properly and in a sustainable way so if we look at this slide that uh, I have talked about the 70% of the world population lies within the day walk of the coastline. So it's uh, almost 100 km of the coastline you can find the 70% of the coast, 70% uh, of the world population lies. So the, you, if you see that uh, big cities of the world so that are all uh, in the coastline whether it is Tokyo, uh, it's a big mega cities, mega cities whether it is Los Angeles, whether it is Mexico City, whether it is New York, whether it is Sao Paulo whether it is Mumbai, whether it is Kolkata, so all the biggest cities of the world are uh, lies in the coastline, okay and so that uh, is the biggest uh, also the threat that the human activities are increasing in the coastal zone so anthropogenic impact are much more that's hampering uh, basically in the coastal zone so that's why the ICJDM integrated management of the coastal zone is much more important nowadays and uh, we can see that uh, different coastal uh, construction uh, we are approaching toward the ocean so uh, that is the biggest threat that we are making mega structure big 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 construction within the coast and even in the within the ocean so that is really a biggest uh, threats that we are uh, facing we will be facing in the near future like see here that uh, just in the beach so big big uh, construction big big uh, construction are uh, coming it's just a big example that a palm island okay so that uh, if, if any times the any storm surges or any tsunamis or anything is coming and that due to coastal erosion that is erode and this so what happened this construction it will be vanished within a second if the any tsunamis or big events or catastrophic event comes so we are approaching into the Ocean. so it's, it's it's not a sustainable approach okay and if, if if you imagine that the due to the global climate change the sea level is increasing so near uh, 50 or 100 years the mega cities of the world are going to be sink okay so here you can see the sinking cities okay in in last 100 years almost uh, the one meter more than in few in few cities uh, almost one meter two meter four meter like the tokyo is almost four meters it's uh, sinking okay due to the sea level rise so that is the biggest threat that you can see here the Bangkok all the cities are almost uh, sinking uh, means uh, from the core means uh, due to the increasing of the sea level so next uh, in next uh, 25 years uh, what will be happen okay so that is uh, the thing that uh, subsidence of sinking cities uh, in next 50 to 100 years uh, make uh, uh, lots of the mega cities uh, could be within uh, the ocean 
and uh, now see the dynamic system so we have talked about it that the ocean is a uh, coastal zone is a much more dynamic system so let's see here okay so here uh, so rivers are coming uh, from uh, the landward side and it's meet in the ocean so that region is called the estuary in the estuary you can find lots of the delta intertidal flat and in this region you can find different ecosystem like the coral reef you can find seagrass ecosystem you can find the wetland mangrove swamps i have talked about it this one so this all the ecosystem also lies within uh, the coast, uh, coastal zone and uh, this is a estuarian region estuarian uh, ecosystem and if you go to a sandy shore ecosystem sandy shore region then you can find the in the background of the sandy shore there will be the sand dunes it's a huge importance for protection of the coastal zone and if you see on the rocky shore there will be the rocky beaches are there and it's a farming a bay system and the rivers are also coming the tidal current is also going towards the river so the high tides is the river ocean water reaching to the river so it's mixing uh, this water from uh, fresh water to the saline water and it's also making the natural harbor region in the bay region okay and uh, the waves are coming towards uh, the land and it is also the longshore coming or uh, towards uh, means uh, the horizontal line of the uh, line so that is uh, that makes the in the coastal zone makes a huge uh, dynamic system different habitats uh, with uh, the different processes now here it's uh, we are seeing the different industries are how they are making conflicts so they making conflicts to each other in the coastal zone like the agriculture so agricultures are uh, having lots of the runoff and it could be include the fertilizer and pesticide so from the agricultural land all the runoffs are coming reaching to the uh, ocean and it's hampering the marine reserve because of the pesticide are coming it's hampering and uh, fertilizer is also coming towards the ocean and it's also hampering the fishing industry okay so uh, so that's uh, that both the system are conflict to each other like here the uh, uh, industry industrial or uh, effluent directly reaching to the ocean that the urban settlement so domestic sewage is also uh, coming uh, toward the ocean so that's also make a much more polluted water in the coastal zones so that is hampering the recreation and tourism industry if uh, you go to the beach and you can see that the beach is much more polluted so then no tourism industry will be growing that polluted beach so it's uh, it's conflicting uh, to each others so that's uh, how uh, the coastal resources uh, are conflicting uh, by different industry and here uh, you can see that's how uh, means a dam dam and irrigation of agriculture are hampering uh, or the fishing industry okay like uh, the, you, the you in make uh, many many uh, countries you can see the where the bigger river big rivers are coming to the coast or meet uh, the ocean uh, in the upstream you can find the construction of the lots of the dam so that dams basically used to store the water for the agriculture purposes and that dams are hampering the migration of the fish fish where which are uh, coming from the ocean to the land so uh, means ocean to the fresh water for their migration they are also their migratory route are um, hampered due to the construction of the dam and uh, from this agriculture runoff uh, it could coming uh, the or lots of the fertilizer are coming to this from the agriculture land uh, to the ocean and that increase uh, the nutrient and that increase in the nutrient that increase the algal bloom so that algal bloom sometimes it's uh, very harmful the red algae so red algal bloom the red tide could be happen so that's also kill the fish okay so that's agriculture runoff hampering the fishing industry on the other hand if uh, the pesticide will coming uh, uh, to the ocean uh, from the agriculture land it's also reduce the survival rate of the uh, juvenile fish and also it's increase the bioaccumulation in the fish and that's also indirectly impacting to our health because the bioaccumulation or the heavy metal uh, it's uh, or the pesticide rich fish we are eating so bioaccumulation is a uh, so that's why the agriculture and and the dams that's how it's impacting the coastal fisheries now uh, we have uh, so there is lots of the trade in the coastal system coastal zones are much more uh, uh, I mean, there are lots of the trades are there okay so we are finding a few more important trades means uh, not means 
few vital traits uh, we are listing here first one is the biodiversity law so as we already talk about it is much more a productive region it is much more biological diverse region here the in the coastal zone lots of the species of the fish are coming for their breeding and for their nursing and so it's a very rich in biological diversity but we are hampering a lot like that like this one this is a troll net troll net is totally devastating the seabed so it's it's, it's make the seabed is uh, totally even and that's uh, lots of the uh, organism are have inhabited in uh, the seabed so they are they are drag everything in the troll net bottom trawling it's drag everything whatever is coming in its uh, way so it's a uh, biggest threat that the biological law the diversity loss and the over exploitation of the resources is also threat uh, or to our biodiversity and the pollution it could be a domestic pollution it could be industrial pollution or it could be it, any kind we are using basically ocean as a dumping ground so anything whatever waste we are putting in, into the ocean so that is a increase the pollution load is also biggest threat in the coastal uh, zone and the coastal erosion coastal erosion is also due to the, uh, the global uh, and the global climate change also global due to the global climate change sea level is increasing the ocean is approaching towards the land and it's erode the coastal zone so coastal erosion is happening and that due to climate change the ocean acidification is happening and um, the sea level increase so that's as a uh, lots of the natural calamities increase day to day by day so due to the sea surface temperature increase that the natural calamities like the cyclone typhoon so the, the storm surges are increased so that's all about uh, the traits of the crystal zone and uh, there will be uh, the coastal uh, zone is much more productive much more resourceful but uh, there is will lots of the threat we are not managing properly so that is the need of the over is uh, that we have to manage this coastal zone and uh, it should be an integrated approach and it should be a sustainable approach so that's so uh, we'll uh, see in uh, next uh, lecture that how we can manage it so that's all about it uh, the introduction uh, to I say Jadam so thank you, thank you.